Hello. Uh, so it is my absolute honor to introduce Danny Efron. He is, um, so we have the American Cancer Society, and then we have the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, uh, which is the legislative side. Penny is the athlete for our congressional district. They do things like go to D.C., lobby for legislation to benefit cancer patients. And Danny is one of the athletes from the Phoenix area, but he traveled up here to be here tonight and to share his story with us. So thank you so much, Danny. Thank you, Christy, and thank you everyone so much uh, for joining in this incredible event. So on October 1st, 2015, the day before I was set to go in for major brain surgery to remove a large cancerous tumor from my parietal lobe, my mother died of, brain, of pancreatic cancer. Now, I introduced with, with this just to show the relationship and the gravity that cancer has played in my life. So I'm actually a two-time brain cancer survivor. And, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, yep. it's, uh, it's been a rough go, but I was first diagnosed in 2013, not with cancer, with a tumor. They discovered that I had a, a large tumor in my brain, and I was actually suffering from really, really bad symptoms. I was getting these horrible headaches. It felt like an ax was digging into my head and then grinding back and forth. Uh, I would get a scene that would go across my eye and I'd lose my vision. And I was on a medication at the time that was just for my skin, and I thought that was the reason for it. So I remember I was at my dermatologist and telling her about it, and she goes, well, Danny, you know, that really doesn't sound like uh, uh, side effects from the medication. I think you need to go get an MRI or a CAT scan. So she sent me immediately to the emergency room. And when I went there, they found a large uh, inflamed ball on my head, and they said, uh, Sir, I think we should do emergency brain surgery. And I was like, there's no way. I, I just found out about, about this a second ago. I'm gonna go see a second opinion. And I did, and uh, when I went to see a second opinion, they said, well, it looks like there's something really inflamed in your head, so they prescribed me steroids. The steroids worked like a charm, and it actually took all the swelling down. And they said, well, so what's in your head looks manageable, uh, but let's monitor it. And I said, well, that's cool, we can monitor it, but I don't wanna be on steroids. So I took myself off steroids, and for two years I treated myself with cannabis oil and I changed my diet. And uh, all the swelling went down, and they said, hey, this thing in your head most likely looks like a ball you were born with, and this is gonna flame from the medicine you're on. So I was like, that's great. Then two years later, in 2015, everything kind of churned. My mother, who was my world and my best friend, got really sick at this time. And I was the only one there to take care of her, and the stress really started to mount. And every six months, I would go in to get an MRI. The stress and the symptoms started roaring back. This time, I couldn't take a few steps without vomiting. The pain was so bad. So I had to immediately rush in to get a, an, an MRI, and they found out in the five months, I couldn't even wait a full month to get to that six months, my tumor had tripled in size and became active with malignant tissue. Now, this time, was super scary because I, I needed to really reevaluate my life because I saw my father die of cancer, my mother, I had two sisters who have both had breast cancer, thankfully they're now cancer free, but this was scary for me because I needed to have brain surgery. So I went in for brain surgery and at first it seemed a success. They said that it looked like they got all the, the tumor out except there's a little bit left and uh, they're just gonna wait for the post biopsy results. When the post biopsy results came back in, they were not good. Uh, I mean, the post surgery biopsy results came back in, they were not good at all. They found that actually I had stage three glioma that had taken root in my corpus callosum, the brain stem area in my brain, which is inoperable. And they said I had around two to four years to live. Now, I wouldn't accept this diagnosis at all. Like, it made me upset to even hear that. Uh, I was always of the mindset if something gets in your way, you fight through it. And I resolved at that time that I was gonna fight it. So I decided that I'm gonna change my course and I'm going to go with traditional treatment. So I did radiation, I did chemotherapy, but I also did, started researching like crazy every natural cancer-fighting remedy I could find. I did cannabis oil, and six months later, I was cancer-free. And I was cancer-free for seven years, I would say that way. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. So during that seven years, you know, at first I reevaluated re my life and I repurposed it. I realized that I went through a major health battle and I wanted to inspire others. So I started to join up in charities. I organized a run in Las Vegas for uh, the Musella Foundation, which is a brain cancer organization. When I moved to Arizona, I organized a run for the Head for the Start. And then in 2022, well actually, sorry, back up a little, then I was so fortunate enough to be connected with the American Cancer Society, who afforded me the opportunity of twice being able to speak to members of the US Congress to pass billions in cancer funding legislation. And I believe that, that deserves a round of applause for sure, to the American Cancer Society. So this last year, I go in for a regular scan again, and they find new tumor growth. And they tell me that Danny, we need, you need to operate and, and get this out of your head. And they said, we don't know if it's cancerous. It could just be, you know, some new tumor growth that's benign and we could go in there and clean it up. But just in case they wanted to fit me for uh, radiation seeds, which is a new uh, therapy. They actually put seeds, localized seeds, in the, the, the area where they found the tumor and the surgery was. I had radiation the first time I went through brain cancer and I lost all my hair. And I said, well, okay, this one, it goes inside, so I'm, I'm game. So I said, do, do what I need to do, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go that route. So I did that and the surgery was a success and things were going really well. And two weeks later, I'm in my house and I'm in the bathroom and suddenly I can't get out of, out of my bathroom. There's only one way in and one way out. And every time I reach for the handle, I hit the wall, I hit, I hit it at a wall, and I'm, I, I don't know what's going on, I'm terrified. So I call my uh, fiance and I tell her what's happening, and I'm like, Louie, I'm on the floor of the bathroom, because I don't know what is happening in my world. And she says, well, uh, let's, you know, your cousin's coming by, let's, let's wait and we'll call a doctor in the morning. So my cousin comes by and he picks me up, he was visiting from California, and I remember we're driving down, driving down the road to uh, a place to eat. I remember driving up the road, and I'm not driving, mind you, I'm sitting in the passenger seat, but in one second it feels like I'm driving up the road, the next second it feels like I'm driving down it. The next second it feels like I'm driving east on it, the next second I feel like I'm driving west. And this is just, this is mind-blowing to me, it's, it's crazy. And suddenly, hallucinations started kicking in like never before. I was getting a massive pain behind my right eye. It was like a grinding pain. Suddenly the walls were opening up on me and closing. It was literally like I was in a fun house, but there was no fun involved. Another scene took place where I remember standing on the top of my landing and looking down and seeing my white dog, my big white dog, and suddenly he fades out of sight and my black dog, I just see her head and her two legs trail by with the back of her body looking like puff of a choo-choo train going by. And mind you, I'm seeing this in but right in front of my face. I have to keep telling myself this is not real. And then I look at my, my, my fiance and I look at my son and their faces are sewn shut. Their eyes are closed, their mouth is like twisted to the side. I had to, I recoiled back, but I had to hold myself and tell myself this is not real. This is not real, I have to be there and be strong, especially for my son. Uh, but it was literally, I was, I felt like I was insane and things got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I even want to live and go on like this. But I remember that I'm a fighter and I will always do what I have to do to keep going. And then, thank you, thank you. So I, I went and I back to the doctor and you know they said that, okay Danny, your cancer has advanced, it's stage four glioblastoma now, and you do have, you did suffer a stroke in your surgical area. So that stroke was the thing that really affected me. And my hallucinations, they started off mild. Well, not mild, that bathroom scene was pretty intense, but they got to a point where I could only see like out of a pinhole straight ahead. The rest of the world looked like a kaleidoscope of color. And just a, a little funny story. I mean, not, nothing's too funny in this, but my little, my five-year-old son there, who's sitting down, uh, he came up to me and said, Daddy, I have a hack for you to be able to see. Now, my left side was completely blind. I remember the occupational therapist showed me a trick to do, you know, to practice and follow with my eye. 
As soon as I got to here, everything disappeared. I had about a pinhole where I could see. So Eddie said, Daddy, I'm going to help you see out your left-hand side. And he goes behind me, and he turns me, and he goes, that's a hack. And I said, thank you, buddy. I can see on my left now. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty uh, incredible for that. And so yeah, after that, I was basically blind for three months. And I was still suffering these incredible, incredible headaches, and nothing would help. I couldn't sleep, and I was taking loads of opiates, and I did not want to be down that path, because as we know, the, as we know, that's a very dangerous path to be on. So I went to my doctor, and I told her about this pain that's affecting my life. You know, I was blind, everything was, I was in straight suffering. And he said, let's try ketamine therapy. So I tried ketamine therapy. I don't know if anyone is familiar with ketamine therapy, but exactly. And it was life-changing. I remember I couldn't even vision stuff in my head because like my brain felt like it was shut down. And I remember the first time going under and having the therapy, it was like my eyes in my head opened up again. And suddenly the pain was gone like that. It was magical and I could not believe it. So I kept going through the ketamine therapy me. And then, uh, then I started chemotherapy. I started two types of chemotherapy, gliosine and Tipsovo. And actually, I just finished uh, my second chemo, uh, the chemotherapy, so I'm very happy about that. And then the Tipsovo, thank you. I will be on for the rest of my life, but you know what? I can handle that. Because let me tell you, there's one thing I've always lived by. And as I said, is that is the power of fight. Because I always feel if there's uh, something, if there's a will, there's a way. And if there's an obstacle, you have to fight your way through that. And what I ask you all to do is actually, I did uh, just launch a YouTube channel called The Power of Fight with Danny Efron. If everyone could open their phones, go to that and click and subscribe. I actually have videos that I really detail the magnitude of my hallucinations because, and what I went through because I've only given you a snippet of the craziness that ensued. But, I don't want to go too long here, but I just want to say that my goal is really to be an inspiration, to help people. You know, I was given a timeline, I was told that I wouldn't be here very long, and I, I, would, I looked at in the face and I said, no. I have a children's book that I just wrote for my son called How Eddie Put a Smile on the Moon. I have that YouTube channel I launched, and I am determined to defeat cancer this time, even though I'm stuck in the middle of it, but I will be back and I will survive, and I, to everyone out there, is remember, you never are fully out. If there's a will, there's a way, and that way is to fight. Thank you.